Hello all, this is Dr. Alsip, and thank you for joining me to talk about the parotid gland. So in the last learning objective video, we discussed the location of the parotid gland. So in this video, we're going to focus more on the function of the parotid gland and kind of overall in terms of the salivary glands and how its secretion, saliva, will make its way to the oral cavity. As the parotid gland is an exocrine gland, it will have an important duct that will allow the transport to the oral cavity. So salivary glands, these do exactly what you likely expect salivary glands to do, which is to produce saliva. Salivary glands are examples of exocrine glands, which produce and secrete substances onto an epithelial surface by way, importantly, of a duct. Remember how this differs from an endocrine gland like the thyroid or the parathyroid glands, which secretes hormones directly into the bloodstream, so no ducts. There are three sets or pairs of sal main pairs of salivary glands. The parotid glands are the largest, which is going to be the main focus of this session. The submandibular glands are very prominent under the chin region, and it's also the major producer of saliva, so the submandibular gland here. And the sublingual glands are associated with the sublingual space, and thus are deeper than those submandibular glands. There are also smaller salivary glands, which are associated within the oral cavity. These include the labial, the buccal, the palatal, uh, and the lingual. These are generally quite small, and we really won't discuss these in much more detail. So what is saliva? Well, it is basically just serous fluid with a little bit of mucus and some digestive enzymes. Saliva is hugely important in the maintenance of oral health and decreased secretion from these salivary glands can result in increased incidence of oral conditions such as periodontal disease or dent dental caries or infections. It's also very important in terms of lubrication to assist in swallowing as well as moistening the oral cavity. Now even though the product glands are quite large, it is actually the submandibular glands that are going to produce uh, the majority of the saliva within the oral cavity. People produce varying amounts of saliva dependent on many different factors. Things like, are you about to eat? Are you ill? Is there an infection in the mouth? Are you a baby? <laughs> saliva can act as a fluid seal for suckling, so you often see babies with a very noticeable amount of saliva. So let's quickly review the general area of the parotid gland. It is going to be located in the parotid fossa, which is anterior to the ear but not quite in the cheek region. Make sure to review the parotid fossa video and learning objective to really review those more exact boundaries of the parotid fossa. Since the parotid gland is located comparatively far away from the oral cavity, it has to have a relatively long duct to get to the oral cavity. And this duct is referred to as the parotid duct, but you will likely uh, more commonly here it referred to as Stinson's duct in the clinic. So let's review the pathway of the parotid duct. The duct will emerge from the anterior border of the parotid gland right here. And it is typically pretty obvious superficial to the masseter muscle. So here's your masseter muscle right here. To me the duct looks kind of like a large artery or a vein, but of course it's not. Um, it's a duct, but at that anterior border of the masseter muscle, it's going to turn medially to pierce through the buccinator muscle. And that's where you can kind of lose it at this point in terms of the view. Actually, right here we're looking at the buccal fat pad, and the buccinator muscle will be deep to that. So when you're thinking of the buccinator muscle, think the cheek region. The duct will enter the oral vestibule opposite the second maxillary molar, which you can kind of see right here. And what you see in the oral vestibule is this little mounding right here. And right in the middle, there's going to be a little opening, which is the papilla of the parotid duct. Saliva from the parotid gland will secrete through here, and then it's in the oral cavity. So that is the parotid gland and its parotid duct. Let's spend the last two minutes with a question. Okay, question. The parotid duct pierces which muscle before it enters the oral vestibule? Is it A, the buccinator, B, masseter, C, omohyoid, 
D. Orbicularis oris, or E. Sternocleidomastoid. Try to answer this question without reviewing your notes. See if you have this lodged in your memory. And when you're ready, the correct answer is going to be A, the buccinator, which, recall, is in the cheek region. The parotid duct will dive through this muscle to enter the oral vestibule region or to allow for the, the flow of the saliva to reach that region. The buccinator is a muscle of facial expression. We will talk about it in a bit more detail in the next session. The masseter muscle is a good distractor, as the parotid duct does have a close relationship with the masseter, but the duct runs superficial to this muscle and does not dive deep, so this is a more proximal relationship. The omohyoid muscle is a strap muscle of the neck, and the sternocleidomastoid muscle is also associated with the neck, so both of these are incorrect. The orbicularis oris muscle is another muscle of facial expression that actually surrounds the entire mouth region. So this is close. It's getting closer to the mouth and the oral vestibule, but not the correct answer. So that should wrap us up for this video. Do always feel free to reach out with any questions after you review, and have a wonderful day.